you so much. So we're going to talk about SEO. Um, first, yes, it works. So I'm Marieke van der Racht. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm one of the co-owners at Joost. I do a lot of uh, blogging about content SEO, copywriting, and I'm actually the founder of Joost Academy. I also have a PhD in criminology. So before I joined Joost, Joost was founded by my husband. Um, I was a teacher in criminology, but then the company started growing and uh, our family started growing. We have four children together. It, <laughs> it was a bit too much to combine all the things. So if you can't beat them, join them. That's my thing. And uh, so I started working at Joost and uh, now I'm I'm an SEO, I, I guess, yeah. So, SEO in 2018, this is a lightning talk. <laughs> and I can't, well, I can't, re can't talk really, really fast, but only in Dutch. <laughs> so I can talk you through all the things that are going on in SEO in 2018. So I'm going to talk only about the most important stuff. If you want to talk some more, come talk to me after. If you have any technical questions, please address them to our CTO, Omar, who is sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, SEO in 2018, there's a lot going on. Um, there are, uh, Google is turning out all these new types of schema, which allow you to make those cool rich snippets. Voice search is making large steps. Gutenberg is so close, we can almost touch it. And mobile-first indexing has been rolled out. So as from March this year, Google scrolls your mobile website in order to save the, the, the contents of your website and put it in the index. So there are no two separate indexes. There's only one index, and Google takes your mobile site. Is this a big thing? Should you be panicking? No, you shouldn't. Uh, if your site has a responsive design, if your content is similar, or if it's exactly the same on your mobile site, on, a, on, your webs on your desktop website, then you have pretty much nothing to worry about. That being said, your mobile does need some attention. So as most search queries come from mobile phones nowadays, Google finds mobile really, really important. So you have to make sure that your design is flawless and that people have a good mobile experience. So, as I said, lots going on, and what's keep coming back is the word context. So that's what I'm going to talk about most today. If you want to know anything about SEO, you're going to look at Google. And of course, there are other search engines out there, but Google is by far the largest one. And so at Yoast, we talk to Google. We work with Google, we ask Google for advice. If you've been to WordCamp Europe this year, you've seen the really, really large booth Google put there. So Google has shown a great interest in WordPress. And I think that's because we are about one third of the web, so that's a really large population. So WordPress is, is important to Google. But as much as we talk to Google, we're pretty much left in the dark knowing what makes a website rank or not. Sometimes they say something, but still it's, it's really, really a big secret what ranks. So if you want to know anything, the best way to start is by looking at Google's mission. And Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And this pretty much means that you have to make an awesome website. Because if your website serves the result that the user is looking for, then that will make the best match for your website. So Google just wants to please the user. And if you bear that in mind, you have to make an awesome website. I know Google also wants to make money, I'm aware of that. <laughs> but uh, their mission is a good way to, well, to understand what they are doing. That's not the only thing you can do. The other thing we do a lot is to study patterns. So whenever Google has like this new type of technology, they request the patent. They want to own that piece of technology. And the good thing about those patents is that they become public if they are granted. So if you study those patents, you pretty much know the things Google is doing by yeah, seeing what kind of technology they claim as their own. And what keeps coming back now is the word context. I already told you about that. 
So context is becoming really, really important. Where in the old days, if you wanted to rank for the term ballet shoes, I always want to rank for the term ballet shoes, then uh, you had to use the, the word ballet shoes in every other sentence and you would just magically turn off. <laughs> and that's, that, no, I don't want to say it doesn't work anymore, but it's becoming more complicated than that because Google can read text. Google is becoming more and more able to, well, to be like a human being in text. So in order to really understand this context, I'm going to talk about the related entities patent, which was granted this year. And the related entities patents actually means that, there, that Google has built a database in which things that belong together are saved. So for ballet shoes, I don't know if this is a good example. You have maybe ballet lessons and stuff that, that belong with that, that certain concept. And these things are saved together. This means that machine learning is involved. So whenever Google finds out that, that some concepts are used in the same um, text on multiple places in the internet, it understands, ah, these things actually belong together. And it saves them in the internet or in, in their database, in their related entities database. So you can see all kinds of um, examples of this. So if you were to search for the search query, what is Yoast, then Google will know related questions. They will know that you're actually searching for the best SEO for WordPress. You can see that. So you're searching maybe for how much is Yoast SEO premium, and what is the best SEO for WordPress? It's suggested. Google is very, very smart. So this has to do with voice search, of course, as well, because, um, <laughs> because uh, Google is, is getting into longer search queries, so we're having questions or longer sentences. Um, you'll see those um, answer boxes pop up, so Google is working towards more singular results, so one result, it doesn't want to um, present the um, user a list of possibilities, it wants to just present the answer. I don't know whether we should be happy about that or not, but it's something to keep in mind that that's what they're working towards. Back to the related entities, you'll see them in more places as well. If you were to search for Tagliatelli, you'll find out that Google will also serve you results in spaghetti and pasta as well. So Google will know that Tagliatelli is actually related to pasta and spaghetti, which is really logical. Pretty smart for Google. So what should you do? What does this mean for your SEO strategy? Should you do anything? Well, I think the most important thing is that the exact matching of a keyword becomes a bit less important. It still remains important because that exact keyword is the thing your user is looking for. These are the words they are using when searching. So they want to find those words. So the, the, word, the exact words that a user is looking for are always the most important. But related concepts, synonyms are becoming more important as well. So you should make the best of that. You should make sure you use those related keywords in your posts. You should make sure you use those synonyms in your posts. So in our plugin, we used to, we still have the focus keyword and it will remain there. But we are working on really cool, new ways of recognizing a different word order, recognizing multiple keywords, recognizing synonyms, which is already in there, but we're making sure in a few weeks or months it will come out and we'll have, um, well, we have your back in, in adding more context in your text. But you should also make sure that you have context in your internal linking. So linking from one post to another is making sure that these, these links are contextual, that these links make sense for your user, that the sentence in which you embed a link actually is contextual to the post you're linking towards. So Google will crawl your website and will see, oh, these links are actually useful for the reader because they are contextual. And Google is able to do that because of their related entities database. So my time is almost up. I have time for a little bit of questions afterwards. Um, what you should remember is that there's a lot going on. We have at Yoast 
a really busy schedule in things we want to build, but we have been preoccupied with Gutenberg, <laughs> really, for a, a long time, almost a year now. And we've done some other things as well, but that pretty much took all of our development time. We're Gutenberg ready, so it's going to, to come in a few weeks, and it'll be okay. But um, I think we have now, now have time to build new awesome things as well. So, that was it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we've got time, I think about five minutes for questions. So over there, number one. Oh, okay. Next. Hey, hey. Hi. <laughs> Can you talk briefly about mobile first indexing and technologies like AMP and how important it is to use or not use those kinds of uh, things? Systems, yeah. Well, um, mobile first indexing is not something you can use, it's just there. But AMP is important as well. It's not the same thing. AMP is not a ranking factor, at least Google says it, it's not. And they're usually, well, if they say something is pretty much true, then they're not liars. Um, so it's not a ranking factor, but AMP makes your website much, much faster. And uh, spending my time on holidays with really bad Wi-Fi, <laughs> yeah, I understand why AMP is getting more and more important. So I think we should, yeah, you should take take some time to look into that and make sure your websites. So I, I think that's that that every website should have AMP in in some time, yeah, because of the speed, basically. Yeah. Next question. Uh, what about 2019? <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. mention something. <laughs> Well, she only yeah. had 10 minutes. <laughs> I only have 10 minutes. So, um, good question. Um, I think voice search is going to be bigger. Um, I'm not sure whether everybody is, is ready for voice search. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of voice search, but I see Google pushing towards that, making more, more kinds of t types of schema in which the, the top result is the most important one and, not, and the other ones are just too down. So that makes th that makes it very important to, to, to be the number one result, not even on the first page, but the number one. And that's that's hard. So competition is getting harder, tougher. I don't know the, the, the word in English. Um, I also think but that's that's uh, so that all the website we 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 all started building websites like what is it? I don't know when, but, but they're all getting bigger and bigger. So at our own websites, we're noticing that we. We, we have an overkill in content and cannibalizing on our own content. So we wrote like six articles about site structure and we did all the linking structure correctly, but still, maybe we should have less articles, longer ones, because we can't rank with all of them in the search results because Google will only allow us to have well, one or two. So that's something I think more websites will We'll have to deal with with a growing website just because we've been around for a while now. I think I don't. I don't know. That that's my opinion. Probably got time for one last question. If if exact match keywords are less important, what what sorts of keyword density should we be looking at for exact match keywords? And um, yeah. how many times should we be looking to include? related concepts or synonyms in, in the content? It's really hard to have those exact numbers, <laughs> but we'll have them in our plugin, so we, we have to make a decision, and I don't know where we cut it off. I think the best thing is that a text should be readable and, and read natural, and if you, if you write a natural text, you'll, you'll be using synonyms quite natural. There are all kinds of tools to look up synonyms, we don't have those yet, right? No. So, so we, we allow you to, to add your own synonyms in, in a text now. Um, it's really hard to, 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 to call out the exact numbers. I don't have them in my head either, and they're not that important, but you should have the exact... So I think you should have the, the exact match keyword in one of your headings. So we're looking for the exact match keyword. Yes. Depends on the length of your keyword. Okay. So we, we have done 
uh, we have done a recalibration, that's the word. We have, um, so I, I led a project in which we totally um, looked into our own SEO analysis again, because my husband started doing SEO, and he's not an academic person, he's really smart, because now I took all the research with it and, 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 and checked out whether or not we could like really account for why we cut off at certain points in our, in our SEO analysis. And we are, we'll have a new version, which is not that far off the one we have now, in which we will have less exact catch match keyword matching. And if your keyword is really lengthy, so you have three or four words, then then if you, if you put it in like four times, your text becomes really weird. Well, if it's really short, you can, you can pull it off. Is, does that answer your question? That's not great. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. A great big round of applause, please. Um,